Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're gonna to be talking about why vegans and especially vegan activists should be advocating for lab-grown meat otherwise now known as cultured or cultivated meat. In the intro of my recent video debunking what I've learned on cultured meat, I mentioned the importance of vegans advocating for it, but never truly went in depth on some of the reasons why. And if you haven't seen the video, I strongly recommend you watch it after this one, as it contains a lot of info related to the scalability of cultured meat and offers strong arguments against the notion that cultured meat will never be brought to scale, is not economically viable, etc. Today, I wanna to cover topics related to how cultured meat doesn't necessarily anymore require animal products to develop it, why vegans who don't want to necessarily consume it should still promote it, and why getting even a small proportion of people on board with veganism as a result of cultured meat being brought to scale could bring the vegan movement to a tipping point where we actually are able to make large scale change. So first I wanna cover how cultured meat does not necessarily require animal products in order to develop it. Traditionally, fetal bovine serum is what has been used to facilitate the production of cultured meat. Many vegans have talked about how the extraction process of fetal bovine serum is quite cruel. And this is true, and it's been known since as early as 2002. From this paper from 2002, fetal bovine serum is harvested from bovine fetuses taken from pregnant cows during slaughter. Fetal bovine serum is commonly harvested by means of a cardiac puncture without any form of anesthesia. Fetuses are probably exposed to pain and or discomfort, so the current practice of fetal blood harvesting is inhumane. And here's a quick video covering this process visually. And not only is the extraction and production of fetal bovine serum cruel, but it's also incredibly expensive. It can be up to $1,600 per liter to purchase. And I found that a standard 20,000 liter batch of cells cultured using fetal bovine serum yields about 1,800 to 4,500 kilograms of meat. And serum is added to a culture medium at a concentration of two to 10%. So of the 20,000 liter batch of cells, two to 10% or 400 to 2,000 liters is used to generate around 1,800 to 4,500 kilograms of meat. This means that around 640 thousand dollars to 3.2 million dollars is required for fetal bovine serum to generate up to 1800 to 4500 kilograms of meat this is clearly very expensive and not scalable on the bright side alternatives to fetal bovine serum used as a medium are incredibly cheaper according to a paper titled simple and effective serum free medium for sustained expansion of bovine satellite cells for cell cultured meat recently a low-cost serum free medium was described for a human ipscs this media b8 contains a simple mixture of basal media glucose amino acids, vitamins, salts, and fatty acids, minerals, and proteins, all of which can be found in animal tissue. As such, it is likely to be producible in a food-safe manner. Lab-scale B8 production was demonstrated at a cost of $16 per liter when using in-house growth factor production. This cost would likely be reduced with process scale-up and optimization. In contrast, media containing 20% or commercially available serum-free media that have been explored for satellite cells cost $200 to $500 per liter. Because of its simplicity and cost, B8 offers a promising starting point for an effective serum-free medium that could advance cultured meat research. And I just thought I'd share the first paper published on successful serum-free media for cultured meat by Mosa Meat. So also check this one out. It's quite interesting and I've cited it on the channel before. Something else promising is that the two companies that recently gained approval from the USDA and FDA are Good Meat and Upside Foods. Both don't use any animal products, including fetal bovine serum to cultivate their meat. Hey guys, so just wanted to pause the video to issue a quick correction. So after further research, I discovered that good meat actually still painlessly extracts cells from an egg or a living animal. So technically their meat is not free of animal product in terms of how it's developed, but it is free of fetal bovine serum. This is straight from their website. Although this did get me thinking about how in certain scenarios, vegans and especially humans when it comes to humans are okay with say forcibly or without consent extracting something from an animal or a human so like say an animal is sick and they need to like blood work done to get a better understanding of what they're going through or a cow breaks their leg and we need to you know without their consent do surgery and we justify this by saying that we're doing this thing without their consent but it's in their best interest so i'm wondering why this logic can't be applied to something like this where you know we can extract cells from an animal painlessly of course in the interest of thousands or millions of animals depending on how many animals can be saved with you know one extraction of cells from a particular animal so i do think that's something to think about and 
like in my view it makes this not really much of an ethical dilemma i will say though that i do want to know where they get their egg from that they try to extract cells from or the living animal because of course in the case of the egg if they're getting the egg from your usual just egg supplier they're going to be supporting some of the horrific stuff that goes on with male baby chicks who are useless to the egg industry etc anyway back to the video we're going to be reading some of the evidence suggesting that upside foods no longer uses any sort of animal components in their medium for their cultivated meat. Directly from the Upside Foods website from December 9th, 2021, they say, quote, real meat without animals. It's an inspiring vision that offers incredible upside for the world. Environmental, animal welfare, human health, taste, and biodiversity, to name a few. Ever since Upside Foods, previously known as Memphis Meats, was founded in 2015, kicking off the cultivated meat industry, we knew that developing animal-free production methods was one of the most significant technical hurdles we would need to overcome. Today, Upside Foods is announcing that we've developed a cell feed that is completely animal component free. And just skipping through this section, it says, historically, cell feed has contained animal components like fetal bovine serum or animal proteins. These components are a tried and true source of nutrients for the cells, but they come at a cost. First, they are counter to our mission to promote animal welfare and the environment. Cell feed represents the largest driver of the environmental footprint for cultivated meat. Second, these animal components are expensive and there is a limited supply of them on the planet. In fact, cell feed is among the biggest cost drivers for cultivated meat. We knew since our founding that producing an animal component free cell feed was both an immense challenge and a crucial prerequisite to achieving our mission of making meat that is better for the world. So we put together a dream team to focus exclusively on cell feed. This 11 person team includes former leaders from some of the largest biotech companies in the world. Previously, this team developed cost-effective cell feed that does not require fetal bovine serum, but they didn't stop there. We're thrilled to announce that we have cracked the code on a completely animal component free cell feed. As unlikely as it seems, if it is the case that cultured meat is brought to scale and is available commercially, and there's still some companies that are using animal products to cultivate their meat, then vegans who want to either consume or promote these products will have to just do a little bit of research prior just to make sure they're not promoting a company that uses animal products to make their cultivated meat. And maybe there'll even be a sort of label to indicate this, like we have the vegan label today. Who knows? Now let's talk about some vegans who I've seen that are opposed to cultivated meat. I've seen a lot of vegans who have a very impulsive and repulsed kind of reaction to cultivated meat, and I truly don't blame them. I don't think I'll be regularly consuming or even consuming at all any. I have truly decided yet and this would be for health reasons and because i'm generally repulsed by meat but in my view this repulsion to meat or you know not wanting to eat it because of health doesn't mean that i shouldn't as an animal rights activist tell people who want to eat animals to eat cultivated meat instead that is not derived from any animals whatsoever put simply i think all vegans and vegan activists should promote animal component free cultivated meat to meat eaters who claim they can never give up meat once it is commercially sold everywhere. I'm sure we would still have an influx of anti-vegans freaking out over it, quote, not being natural, even though they consume animals that are the product of artificial selection, pumped with artificial antibiotics, etc. And that's when health outcome data is gonna come in handy, which we will hopefully have eventually, which will likely show that cultivated meat generates the same health outcomes as real meat, or maybe even better outcomes, who knows? And though rare, I have encountered vegans who who, even after being made aware that there are animal-free versions of cultivated meat, still oppose it. They say things like, well, the product still perpetuates that animals are resources, or the product technically isn't vegan because if the product itself is made with animal-free components, the animal-free serum was inspired by and hence derived from animal products, so it's not vegan. So in response to the first objection, even if I accepted it as true, I still don't see why we shouldn't be pushing for it, especially if doing so can potentially eradicate animal agriculture, if not greatly reduce it. I would also say that pushing for meat that is grown through cell culture rather than on sentient beings is definitely not incompatible with the pro animal rights message. I mean, you're literally advocating for a food that is an alternative to a food that necessarily violates the rights of animals. And to the second objection, I'm not even sure what to say. The fact is that now animals are not needed whatsoever. And therefore, purchasing and promoting these products will not be putting in demand the rights violations of animals. So what exactly is the problem here? In my opinion, vegans who oppose cultivated meat for either of these reasons are simply holding us back from animal abolition. And to be honest, I question their true intentions as vegans or vegan activists. It just doesn't seem to me that people who maintain these objections, even after hearing all this information, are actually for animal abolition. Maybe they're the actual vegans that we're accused of being all the time that just want to be vegan to be morally superior and they don't want there to be this thing that facilitates animal agriculture becoming completely eradicated. And then at that point, they can't virtue signal to others about how they're vegan and superior to everybody morally. Who knows? And lastly, I would like to discuss something called critical mass theory and how it applies to social movements. Critical mass theory in social movements refers loosely to any formal theory about how interdependent decisions accumulate into collective action or more narrowly to work in the traditional 
composition of Marwell and Oliver. The term critical mass originates in nuclear physics as the smallest amount of fissile material needed to sustain a nuclear chain reaction. As analogy or metaphor, the term has diffused into popular culture and social science and is widely used to refer to any context in which things change after a certain number of people get together or enter a setting. The term has been especially important in research in court cases about racial slash ethnic or gender diversity in college admissions or employment. Social movement activists and scholars often use critical mass in a loose metaphorical way to refer to an initial group of protesters or actors that is big enough to accomplish social change. So the reason I bring your attention to critical mass theory is because there is good reason to believe that cultivated meat being brought to scale can bring the vegan movement to the minimum number needed for us to enact large scale change. The minimum percentage of people needed to be on board to reach this tipping point varies, but it's somewhere between 10 and 25% of people. And if you look at various surveys asking people if they're open to trying cultured meat, the percentage of people willing to try it is well over 10 to 25%. So it seems reasonable to me to believe that once cultured meat is brought to scale, it will be significantly easier to get people on our side with cultured meat being accessible. And this will of course come with cultured dairy and other animal products too, some of which already exist. And with more vegans comes us getting closer to reaching critical mass, which brings us closer to hitting that tipping point where large scale change can occur. All right, guys, well, that's the end of the video. Please send this video around to vegans you know who are skeptical about cultured meat or even vegans who are for it but need to improve their arguments for it. And also just let me know what you think in the comments. I know this topic is a bit controversial for some. If you appreciate my work and want to get early access to it, you can click the link in the pinned comment and support me on Patreon. And this also comes with one-on-one -on -one messaging access with me. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over most, if not all, all of the anti-vegan arguments you're going to hear online. If you want to get that as well, that'll be linked in the pinned comment. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, fuck off. I don't there. want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak to me again. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude.